there guys, Stinger 30 here. Um, a few weeks ago I said I was actually working on a new project for my bike. And in case you haven't figured it out by yet, by looking at what's sitting down here in front of me, I've replaced the switch gear. Now it's no ordinary switch gear mod. This is the original switch gear. 21 years old, same age as the bike. Very tatty and yuck. It's pretty hard. You can actually still buy genuine brand spanking new Suzuki switch gear like this. I've actually found a supplier for it at $198 each. No thanks. So I went hunting on eBay. See what I could discover. And I found these switch gears. That one there. And this fella over here. I'll put a link for this. I will put a link for this in the video section, in the comment section down below. Um, now it's not just a simple method of just going buy the things, plug everything in and it works. It doesn't happen like that. It is a generic switch gear. Um, there is some wiring that needs to be done, or rewiring I should say. It's not tough. It's time consuming, but not tough. You also need to buy new replacement plugs. You can see this plug here that comes with on the standard one. All right. Well, on the generic plugs that you get for the it comes on the end of the switch gear. It, this one's actually the female one. It's actually got the male plug. So what you have to do is you have to go and buy um, new aftermarket plugs and pins. Well, I don't know if aftermarket's the correct word, but new new ones are these. And you actually buy them as a pair. I'll put the link for those down below. I actually bought... Um, when I bought the switch gear, the supplier I bought it off, it took about, I think from memory, about two weeks to get it here. And then when it got here, I was like, oh, plugs are wrong, and I had to go hunt mad, uh, mad dash to find for myself some plugs for it. Lucky enough, I actually found some plugs, and I ordered the plugs, and it took about four weeks to get here. Um, and all parts are sourced from the UK. Now, one thing I need to mention too is, I had to get very, very tricky. And... I've had to do a little bit of dodginess, but it works. I had to mount up a relay. This, um, you probably see there's another relay over there. That relay there actually is for my for my Nautilus air horn, which is sitting up in here. This relay now controls the power that goes when you're on the switch over here. Let's see if we can see the switch. And it says headlights, and then it's got park, and then it says off. When it goes to the headlight position, there was um, there's supposed to be an or the on the original on the original switch gear. Um, you've got the original switch gear, and you've got it, it says lights, and then it says, "Oh Christ, who knows?" You can flat try and read it. I think it might say on, and then it says off. But um, there's an extra little wire that's in off this switch on the original ones that is not in here. Oops, sorry. Uh, yes, over here I should say, on the, um, on the, um, when it comes to the headlight position, there's an extra wire. Now, because there is no extra wire that comes off there for the switch, I had to do a bit of a dodgy, and I ran an extra cable back down here to the, to the relay and so now what happens is in this position that there's no power going through the relay when you flick it onto the headlight that's when the relay kicks in and the relay will actually supply power to the headlight as well as supply power to the rear tail light um, the the brake switch and everything else everything is absolutely 100 percent perfect um, the only other thing i had to do was i had to remove i ended up i went through and removed the the um, the handlebars themselves, or the clip-ons, or whatever you like to call them, that's not tough. You've got to pull all this off, and then re-drill it, because at the bottom of the switch gear, um, there's actually a small pin. Um, there's a small pin on the original, on the, I can't see it on the original one, but on the new one, it's just in there a little bit where my fingernail is, and there's a little brass pin that sits up and locks in the bottom of the, the bottom of the clip-on. So you've actually got to modify that too, so um, it is a little bit of stuffing around, but 
the end result is something that looks like this and it honestly that I think the switch gear um, to me it looks very similar to what you'd find on a Honda motorcycle I suppose but um, I'm, I'm really impressed with the quality of this of the switch gear um, it also had to change there's a couple of wires I had to swap around in here so that the kill switch and the run switch actually runs properly um, but look it's it's not brain surgery and um, if you're reasonably confident with electronics and a multimeter you can get this thing done um, but yeah all right well, I'll stop I'll stop rambling I suppose and get this thing uploaded to YouTube so you guys can have a bit of a squeeze but I'm very proud to say it actually worked and it worked first time I was a little bit I was a little bit nervous with my wiring for the um, for the headlight I honestly thought that when I flicked that switch across to the headlight I was expecting <laughs> An extra, an extra light display or probably more sparks and smoke actually, but um, uh, it's, it's a great feeling now that we actually worked first time. I'm very, very proud of myself. Um, but yes, everything runs runs quite smoothly. So um, yeah, all right, guys. Look, I'll get off. I'll get off this silly looking camera thing, and I'll get this thing uploaded, and you guys can ask some questions if need be. Um, so I think that's about it for projects for the for my Suzuki across. Um, I don't think there's anything else in change. But anyhow, um, yeah, see you later guys.